Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. On this episode, we're going to be talking about poisonous lawn mushrooms. These are mushrooms that could be growing in your lawn, posing a threat to your family, to your toddlers, or to your pets. So come with me, make sure to hit subscribe, and join me on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Hey, on this episode, we're going to be talking about mushrooms that could potentially be growing in your lawn that are posing a threat to your family or to your pets. And these are mushrooms that grow all over the United States. So let's get right into this list of mushrooms that you may have noticed in your yard and you might want to get rid of. We're going to start with the vomiter mushroom. This one, Chlorophyllum molybdides. This is known as the green spored lepiota or the green spored parasol. This mushroom is white with brown scales on top of the cap. It's a medium to large mushroom that's often three inches to 12 inches across and it can grow in a fairy ring formation. This mushroom doesn't need any trees to grow with, so it's known as a saprobic mushroom. That means it can just pop up in your lawn and it can grow for one year and then not show up the next year. These mushrooms often grow in this beautiful fairy ring formation where the fruiting bodies or individual mushrooms form a ring in the middle of the lawn. These mushrooms have white gills. They have a pretty woody stem with a ring on it. And when you flip over the cap, those white gills, when they start to get mature, will turn green or kind of a grayish green color. These mushrooms could be quite attractive to a toddler or a dog that likes to put things in their mouth. One thing about wild mushrooms is that you can put any mushroom in your mouth. You can handle any mushroom. They're not going to get you sick by touching them or even putting them in your mouth. But once you swallow them, it becomes another story. These mushrooms are not known to be deadly necessarily, although there is one child's death that has been attributed to the vomiter. This mushroom has a couple of lookalikes that are good mushrooms to forage, but that's not what we're talking about on this video. The vomiter or the green sport parasol, if you see these growing in your lawn, make sure to throw them in your yard waste bin or you could compost them. Don't worry, their toxins are not gonna transfer to your garden vegetables. The next mushroom we're gonna talk about is probably the most iconic mushroom in the world, the fly agaric or the Amanita muscaria. This is that red mushroom with the white spots on it. This mushroom is in Mario Brothers, it's in Alice in Wonderland, it is the emoji on your phone. It is the most iconic mushroom in the world. It also harbors some toxic effects, so this can really cause gastrointestinal distress, vomiting and diarrhea, as well as some mild psychoactive effects, neither of which do you wanna have your toddler experiencing. So if you see these beautiful red mushrooms with the white spots, probably a good idea to get them out of the lawn. They can be quite attractive to kids because of their value in cartoons and fairy tales and things like that. So a really easy one to identify, it's gonna have white gills, it's gonna have this beautiful ring on the stem, but more than anything, it's gonna have that red color, sometimes orange or yellowish colored with the white spots on the cap. Go ahead and just toss these in the yard waste bin or put them in your compost. I just wanna say I really am not trying to uh, encourage mycophobia. My channel is mainly about wild mushrooms and foraging mushrooms and I love everything about mushrooms but we should know the poisonous ones just as important as the edible ones because the poisonous ones uh, can definitely be deadly uh, although so far we've only been talking about mushrooms that will cause GI upset, not necessarily deadly ones. The third mushroom on the list is called the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. This mushroom occurs in most of North America. It doesn't occur right here in the Pacific Northwest, however, so we're kind of lucky that way. Although they are a cool mushroom because they can glow in the dark and that's how they get the name, the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. But this mushroom, Omphalotus eludens, will often grow on roots of a dead or dying tree that are buried under the ground. So these mushrooms come up in clusters right out of what appears to be the lawn, even though they're growing on dead wood and they can grow on an old dead stump and they can even act like a butt rot decayer or a parasite and kill trees. So when you see big clusters of these orange mushrooms that have orange gills, decurrent gills, that means the gills run down the stem, kind of like a chanterelle. These mushrooms sometimes get confused for chanterelle which makes them dangerous among the foraging community. But they can also grow in big numbers right in your lawn, which make them 
a danger to your family, to your toddler, and to your pets. So if you see the jack-o'-lantern mushrooms, you can toss those out in your yard waste bin as well. Another mushroom that likes to grow on wood is known as the sulfur tuft. And this is one of our more poisonous mushrooms here in the Pacific Northwest. And it's pretty common all across the United States. It's a saprotrophic mushroom. It just eats the decaying matter out of dead wood and sometimes roots that are buried under the ground. So it appears to just be popping up out of your lawn. But if you have some wooded area next to your lawn, or if you have an old stump or an old tree there with these big honey colored flushes of mushrooms, they could potentially be the poisonous uh, sulfur tuff. People mistake these ones for honey mushrooms because honey mushrooms also grow on wood and these, uh, the coloration of the caps of these also are kind of honey colored. But if you flip one over, it's gonna have this really fluorescent green color and they have this dark purple brown spore print. So underneath you got a lot of different colors, a lot of different things growing, going on. But from the top, they can look just kind of like a tan, plain, boring sort of mushroom, but they often grow in these big troops and they can be found in the winter, the spring, the summer, and the fall. And they're growing on dead wood, but sometimes appear to be growing out of your lawn. Hypholoma fasciculari, or the sulfur tuft, is a poisonous mushroom that you want to keep your family safe from. Now we're going to talk a little bit about LBMs. So LBMs are little brown mushrooms. Uh, it's kind of a cute little term made up for thousands of different little brown mushrooms that could potentially be growing on the side of the trail or in your lawn. And some of these mushrooms are okay to eat. A lot of them are not even studied and some of them are hallucinogenic and some of them are even deadly. So we're gonna be talking about some of the more dangerous poisonous ones. So the genus Conosobi and subgenus Foliotina. These mushrooms are little brown mushrooms that can occur in your lawn and be quite inconspicuous. And if you flip them over, they're often gonna have an orange gill color. A lot of these Conosobis are deadly. One of the main identifying features is that on the stem, it's gonna have this ring on it, the Foliotina rugosa, a really deadly poisonous mushroom that grows here in the Northwest. It's just a little brown mushroom, so it makes it kind of dangerous because if a kid were to eat a few of these, you might not find the evidence of what they ate. Con also be definitely a dangerous genus of little brown mushrooms that you should be aware of that could potentially be growing in your grass. Another little brown mushroom known as Gallerina marginata or the funeral bell. And this is a little brown mushroom that is definitely deadly. Um, it contains those amatoxins that I was talking about with conosobi. But these mushrooms always grow off of wood. So if you have an old stump or maybe rotting uh, wood in the ground itself, so this mushroom can have an orange brown spore print, kind of a rusty colored spore print. And again, those gills are gonna be kind of a rusty orange brown color. And it's also gonna have a ring on the stem. So if you're seeing these little brown mushrooms that have a ring on the stem, they could definitely be dangerous to your kids. And you could just go ahead and pick those and throw them in your yard waste bin if it puts your heart at ease. Um, because Gallerina marginata sometimes gets confused by novice foragers who are looking for hallucinogenic mushrooms and they end up picking these and they end up uh, in the emergency room or having to get a liver transplant. So the funeral bell or mushroom you don't want to mess with. You definitely don't want your kids or your dogs ingesting these mushrooms. And this brings me to the most deadly mushrooms in the world responsible for 95% of mushroom deaths, the death cap or Amanita phylloides. This mushroom is a very handsome, medium to large size mushroom. It's gonna be green, kind of an olivaceous green to brownish color on the cap. But as it gets mature, it can turn really kind of a, a creamy white color. And other uh, species in the same genus are known as the destroying angels. And they're more typically found in woodland areas, but can also grow in your lawn just like death caps. And death caps love growing in lawns that are ornamented with imported hardwood trees here in North America. And there's quite a few different species that the Amanita phylloides can associate with. And they grow in pretty large numbers sometimes in the lawn. And the main identifying feature of this mushroom is gonna be this egg-like sac that the mushroom is actually emerging out of. So this is called a vulva sac. And these mushrooms are medium to large. There's nothing scary looking about them. They don't necessarily smell bad. In fact, the people who have eaten them and have actually lived to survive often tell the tale that these were really delicious mushrooms. So Amanita phylloides can look a little bit unassuming, but if it's growing out of that egg-like sac, 
It has a big skirt hanging down on the stem. It's going to have white gills and it's got this olivaceous, opaque, or even a pure white colored cap. And definitely one you don't want your toddler or your pets hanging around. So if you see these growing in your lawn, unfortunately, there's no way to really eradicate the fungus underground. What you're seeing is the fruiting body. So you can collect those, throw them in your garbage or your yard waste bin or in your compost. But unfortunately, next uh, late summer or fall, these mushrooms might reappear um, once they take hold and they get this association going on with specific trees then it's really uh, difficult to get rid of the fungus itself, but we can get rid of the fruiting bodies. I don't want this video to scare people about mushrooms. They are amazing organisms that um, have their own kingdom in the tree of life. They can be absolutely delicious and really fun to go out and forage with your family. But I just want you to be aware that there are certain dangers that could be lurking in your lawn. So thanks for joining this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Make sure to hit subscribe. Go to mushroom-wonderland.com to pick up some merch. And we'll see you on the next episode. Much love, everyone. Peace out.